Oh, shoot. I want to watch Chow. Facts, bro. That's shit. Y'all feeding my ego right now. Chill. Chill, but not keep doing it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yo, why does lighting blowing you up? But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? What's good? Surprise, surprise. Welcome, 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 welcome. It's gonna be good. We're gonna do some code stuff today, and I'm gonna get some feedback from you guys, hopefully. But it feels good to be back. Hopefully, I can stream a little bit more. Um, I do have some news for you guys. I'm moving. I'll be moving at the end of the month, so I'm gonna be out of this house, and I'm moving into my own apartment. It's just gonna be me. It's great. No roommates, more streaming, more me time. I think it's gonna be a lot healthier for me. A lot of room to myself. I'm debating on whether or not like make my living room just an office and like just work out of that and literally have no like sofa, no TV, no nothing. I'm debating on that. I don't know just yet, but we shall see. I don't know what do you guys think, but yes, that is the news. I'm moving out. Oh, only fans can take off. Yo, okay, listen. Guys, before we get started, would any of you guys, if I made a doormat, like a doormat that said only feet in the OnlyFans logo, would you guys buy it? from me it will only be sold for a limited time works better as a doormat yeah for sure right because it's like only feet right you touch your feet on it <laughs> let's get to it let's get to work okay so for those of you guys who don't know or are new here uh, i got a job at airbyte i'll be a, i'm a developer advocate at airbyte and so i'm going to be doing some work literally some work if you guys are coming from true's stream or mute true's stream that's what she does and that's what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be just working on stuff for work uh the cool thing is that i can actually stream it and yeah so right now i'm ramping up right so i gotta learn data engineering uh, i gotta learn data pipelines elt etl stuff data lakes data warehouses it's gonna be a complete 180 of what it is that i i used to do so this is what i'm working on um i am building a connector for airbytes okay so i've i've been working on this uh gas prices uh, connector. And so if you guys aren't familiar with Airbytes, essentially what we do is we move data from some of these sources into a destination, whether that be a data warehouse, a data lake for data analysts or anybody who's really needing, needing to use that stuff. We are kind of your ETL platform, if you, if you will. And we make it super, super easy. As you can see here, like we have sources. So, you know, you have uh, someone who's pulling data from Facebook ads off the web and they're moving it into, let's just say a, a Postgres data base it happens pretty seamlessly it'll conform and transform into any of the formats or schemas for those databases right and we have a bunch of connectors as you can see like these all these sources are sources that you can actually pull from right so like for example there's kafka firestore mongodb you can pull from airtable Plaid is even on here. So my my former employer is on here. You can pull information there. Facebook pages. The list goes on and on. Okta, Notion. And the cool thing is this is all open source. So you can literally fork the repo that we have at GitHub and create your own connector, which is what I'm doing right now to better understand what our product does and how it works um, behind the scenes, essentially. Um, so that's what we're going to be working on today. And so like literally, I've been doing this stuff and learning Python. Like This is what I've built so far. So what do the connectors do exactly? So let's just say, you know, you have data from Google Sheets. You have a bunch of stuff in a, in a, in a spreadsheet and you want to take that stuff and connect it over to your Postgres database. You can do that with Airbyte, right? So you can connect your Google Sheets account and whatever data that you want, select what data you want and easily through our UI, move that over to your database and replicate it there so that any of your data engineers or data analysts can take a look at that data and, and use it. Or you could put it in a dashboard. That way, again, it's easier to see that data and so the connectors themselves are like the sources can be apis so like look so these sources right we have common apis as sources right so you have facebook salesforce google analytics github stripe the list goes on you can also do long tail custom long tail or custom ones so like snowflake is here and a bunch of the other these other ones built with our cdk as well as other databases so you can actually replicate data to another database like a postgres mysql mongodb oracle all that stuff, right? Move that over with Airbyte and then replicate that data in any of these formats and or relational databases. So it, it works pretty seamlessly. So that's what we do and that's what we'll be working with. And that's what I'm going to be building. So yeah, you ELT, right? Same thing. It's uh, extract from sources. So any of these sources that you have, you extract the data from them, you load to your destinations and then you can transform them in whichever way you want. Okay, so what we were working on is this. So I'm using this gas prices uh, API right now for testing purposes and it's kind of 
little wonky. I can kind of walk you guys through what I have so far. Literally, so this is on our docks right now. And I'm building it out, trying to like do this stuff. That's that's essentially why I'm here right now, too. Is I want to get your guys' feedback, right? So we have a Slack channel. We do have a Slack channel for the community, and we need to get I need to get feedback on what kind of content you want to see. So we have this spec.json file. Um, this kind of shows what our connector is gonna have. I've been learning a lot of Python just doing this stuff. Uh, but we're doing it for a project as my onboarding. We out here, baby. So yeah, so we created this connector. It's called source gas prices. And this is going to be connected to the API that I'll be using here. Uh, gas prices API. It's a weird API. Uh, I don't really like it. I'm using it anyways, because why not? We're going to be creating a connector. So that way you can pull information from here. You can consistently get gas prices with the API and move it to a database if you had one. And so here's the spec for it. The first thing that we needed is, you know, obviously the title all of this is generated for you when you create a connector the only things you have to change so write this required list we have two required properties uh, we have an api key and a state so this is obviously user input whatever state you want to uh, query for and then obviously your api key that gets generated from the website and then here's the both are type of string we read a description of the property and then examples uh, here for the state so you know these are alpha codes for states in the us so california are Arkansas, Alabama, Washington. These are just kind of examples. And then within here, we have a couple main files that are generated for you. The main ones are going to be source. The spec is the one we just looked at. So source.py, but these are the streams. So this gas prices stream is essentially going to be the class where we output and call the API and do all that stuff, right? So right now, the first thing that I had to do was do a check. And if we go to our docs right now on the CDK, there's, there's four main concepts here. Um, that we need to implement. So we have spec, which is what we did. It's a required configuration to interact with everything, authentication and things like that. And here's our check. So we got to validate that whatever information you've inputted is valid, right? In order to do that, what I've done is I've taken your API key and the state, uh, and I have a helper function that helps that. But first thing is if the state is not in the state code list that I have generated here. So this is literally all state codes in the US. If that's not in there, like if you have inputted a bad state, well then we return false and just say state not found. Otherwise we're gonna try, try and we're gonna query the URL, right? So here's the URL for um, the state prices in the US. We're defining headers here and then we get the response with, with that and then we return it. If not, here's all the status codes and all the error messages will return. So that's simple input validation right there. <clears throat> the next thing we have to do is we have to do discover. And so this is what I'm going to be working on right now is uh, the discover part. So this is the HTTP stream and that's P and this is going to be uh, none. And so there's the amp. I'm going to copy this, this, this function right here since this is pretty important okay so i gotta copy this over because this is my stream here so we have an init function this is not going to be poking pokemon name anymore this is going to be a uh, states underscore code does that have to match what we defined it as in the config it does so pokemon name so it can't be that it's literally just got it's just got to be state so we'll name this to state okay so that is that so we get self that state Dates. Okay, uh, so this is next page token. So this is pagination. I don't think I really need this. It's so weird to me with Python functions that you don't have a closing bracket. There's no bracket at all. It's actually so bizarre. We are almost there. So the schema that I need. Oh, do we have a schemas folder? Oh, we do. We do. So we're going to have to cross reference this. So this is the USA state code stuff. Okay. I'm going to have a hard time with this one. I think uh, creating this schema, but let's give it a go. Let's give it a try. I get what you're doing. Yeah. So that's the, that's the main thing is like, as long as you're understanding what it is I'm doing, then it's fine. Okay. So instead of mid grade, this is going to be premium. Yeah. So we just have to define the schema of the data that we expect back from this API call. Right? So if we're calling this API, this is the response we need. And so we kind of have to add it, right? Diesel 
So this is the results one. And so now we have another one called cities. And this is going to be of type uh, null and array. You can use online converter JSON to JSON schema. How? Oh my God. If this works, I am going to kiss you. I can't believe this. Is there another way to format this though? I mean, this saves me a lot of time because the thing is, this one's the best one, guys. This one is the best one. What? Okay, this one's nice. This one is nice. We just got to refine a little bit. It's close. So let me copy this. What we'll do is bring this back. And then inside of schemas, we're going to do file and gas.json. Okay, this actually types this pretty similarly. Copy that. Bada bing, bada oop, bada boom. Okay, so we have their type objects and um, properties inside of it success is type do you not have to specify null for type because object can return as null yeah so that's the thing is i w the rework does require me to specify these as nullable okay almost done cool i think this is good we have our schema. Thank you so much for the uh, for the tool recommendation. All right, so we've defined our schema. Where is our discover? Oh, this is right here. Okay, so that's what we got to work on here is auth equals that Pokemon. Um, uh, so then ours is class gas prices stream. So instead of this, return then in ours we're going to do return gas prices stream okay so we have gas prices stream with state equals config state and so let's test this copy this go into my terminal let's just rename this to gas and let's just rename this to gas trying to onboard as quickly as humanly possible you know what i mean oh i see i don't know if this is going to work but let's take a shot at it work okay instead of auth hmm okay that's not working <laughs> Oh, I should be calling the helper. So are you making an open source solution? Yeah, our, all of our connectors are open source. And so you can actually make a connector yourself uh, and contribute yourself if you like um, and submit a PR. But I'm making one for my onboarding. And so instead of returning gas, we're going to return... All right, let's try it. Clear. Oh, has no attribute. Bro, what? Uh, I'm not sure why this isn't working. So this is request params, return params. Oh, I should probably def path. Oh, so I, I didn't set my path. Is that what that is? I swear to God. I swear to God if that's what that is, bro. I think I understand this now. I think. Okay, so then this class should just be prices. So this should be prices. Did you have to learn Python or you already have experience with it? I had to learn Python and I'm still learning it right now. Like I'm literally learning as I code this. And so like, yeah, it's it's a whole experience. <laughs> Let's just do the state, I guess. Uh, def, I think this should work. Okay, uh, inside of our path, I see, okay. And so we return, okay, so we need a template. I learned that this is how you do template literals in python and so instead of returning that so our path is going to be this guy so we want it to be gas prices state usa price price state equals okay i don't know if this is going to work i doubt it yeah it's not gonna work so instead of this maybe what we do is helpers is it get gas prices? No, uh, we want get states, get underscore states. And inside of that, not only do we need the state, but we also need the API underscore key, which is also go, going to be self dot. And then in that we will supply it with API. Okay, I again, I don't think this is going to work. So we'll see. It takes two positional arguments, but three were given. 
What? Okay, let's get rid of these for right now. High in line 165. So it's here. Has no attribute API key traceback back and call. Oh my God, wait, did it work? Wait, it worked. Is this what I'm supposed to get back? I'm not sure. Oh my God. All right, well, we got a response back, so that's good, but Anyways, chat, I, I I do have to prematurely end this stream. Streaming for about two hours, uh, two and a half hours. And this has been good. This has been really good. I'm really happy to be back um, and happy to see you guys again. I just need to eat and get some stuff done before my meeting at 3 p.m. And then uh, get some work done for the rest of the day. And you know how it goes. But um, yeah, this has been good. I'm really excited to be back, guys. I'm really, really pumped to be back and streaming again. Hopefully I can do more of these as I continue onboarding. Uh, this is going to be a change. I will be streaming way more often. Trust me, as long as the work is okay with it, which they are, we, we are in business. And then at the end of the month, obviously I'll be moving and stuff, so I won't be around, but I will uh, hopefully get the stream set up up there pretty fast and then we can get right back to it. But thank you guys for coming through and supporting as always. I will see you guys on another one. Peace.